Hi everyone, in this video I will demonstrate to you how to create a rig for a bouncing ball, uh, the kind of rig that I've used in my tutorial about uh, animating bouncing ball. So let's get right into it. First we create a sphere to represent our ball, and turn it into polygon mesh, and then we create our main control, to do that we create a null object. No, null is like locator in Maya, it's just an empty object uh, that is used to represent stuff. And also, by the way, let's move it up so that it would be resting on the ground. Here's our null, we also move it up. And in the MISC tab, we can change the way it's rendered, we can change its size, and we can change its uh, control type, basically its shape. We can select a box, uh, circles, which looks like which look like this, and we will select uh, one circle on that explain. So this circle will be our main control. It will be responsible for main for moving and rotating our ball, and then we can just parent our sphere to this control, excuse me. Here we can select key po position when parenting so that sphere wouldn't move when we parent it. So now we have a control that uh, will move around and rotate our sphere. Oops. Alright, uh, the next thing that we want is to create a control for squash and stretch. Again, we just create a null object. And name it squash control. We parent it again. One second. Okay, let's first make it look like so, like circles. Move it up a little bit. So it would be at the center and transform the controller so that it would be scaled vertically. This is kind of how it's going to look like. So this is our squash and stretch control. And now we just put it in between the main control and sphere. Also, keep position when parenting needs to be enabled, like so. And now we can scale it and sphere will be scaled along with it. Now, of course, when we squash and stretch an object, we want to maintain its volume. So we copy parameter uh, that will be responsible for scaling, that is scale Y. Right click, copy parameter, uh, paste copy relative references here so that it would automatically take this parameter and, pass, uh, and uh, paste its values into here. And now whenever we change these parameters, uh, this parameter is also changed. Uh, and also we do the same thing here, we copy this parameter and we copy it over here. Uh, we do that because now we can only edit formula in this parameter and it will automatically affect uh, x and that uh, scale of the object. What we want is to just uh, say that its uh, size is 1 divided by uh, its size is y size. So that way when we scale it uh, over the y-axis it squashes and stretches like so, which is kind of nice. Now when is the ball is bouncing forward, we will need to be able to uh, change uh, the tilt of the uh, direction in which squash and stretch is done. So that uh, if ball is coming from this direction, we will want to be able to uh, rotate it, but because uh, when it hits the ground this uh, basically we want the pivot point of the rotation to be over here at the bottom of the ball, not at the center. 
so we just say that pivot y is minus 1 and now we can squash and stretch and rotate it like so and then if we want to move pivot around we will just change these parameters so that we can change pivot to be like this for example so there you go let's say this is like so by the by default and we have our squashing and stretching ball so uh, the next thing we want the ball to be able to roll on the ground and the problem with that is that uh, roll should be independent of squash and stretch for example if we stretch the ball we want we want uh, and let's say we now rotate our rig it will rotate the whole stretched ball what we want to happen instead is to something like this So the one thing we could do is to just oh create a separate null that will control our rotation. Mm, parent it here. Okay, first of all, lift it up. Change it to the default. Make it look like circles because it makes sense. Make it look like this. And this will be our uh, control for rolling the ball. Now we can just parent it. then we simply copy its rotate parameter copy parameter and paste it over here paste relative references now if we rotate this control uh, it rotates correctly and if we want to do this squash or stretch we rotate our control there you go everything looks everything looks nicely now just for we need also to click one thing i forgot to do we need to clean transform because we do not want trans, uh, translate to be one we want uh, by default all of the uh, transformations to be zero so we should actually do this and then we do the same thing over here just as a good practice to do stuff like so and over here too so there you go we have our main control for bouncing our ball like so we have our squash and stretch control and we have roll control excellent and if you want you will also be able to create the control for the pivot Point, but you can also just put it in preferences so to finalize our very simple basic asset we our basic rig we create asset out of it we select all of these nodes and press shift C and it collapses everything into a sub network call it ball ring right click and uh, create click uh, create digital asset name it choose the location for it and accept accept excellent 
So now whenever a person wants to animate a, rig, a ball, he can just uh, you know, create this node and now we will have our acid for animation. Uh, the uh, last thing that we need to do, uh, well at least the next thing, is to uh, edit its parameters so that uh, only the parameters that we want to animate would be available over here. To do that we uh, allow editing of contents, uh, right click, type properties and we go to the parameters tab. Uh, hide all the parameters that are there by default. Click this and this and select the visible. And now we want to take parameters from our nodes that control the rig. So we mm, click the tab from nodes, uh, expand ball rig. We want to first of all uh, control position and rotation from our main control, uh, like here. Translate rotate next we want to roll so that here we want to only to take only rotation from here and rename it as roll uh, next thing we want to control is squash and stretch so we open our squash control and uh, take uh, scale y from here and call it squash stretch and we select a range for this from 0 0.5 to uh, let's say 2 and this will be the range in which our ball can squash and stretch it is convenient for our slider and what else do we want here a squash control or oh, we, we want it to be able to control its speed uh, as well Wash stretch pivot, let's say. Oh, and we of course want to be able to rotate it as well. Okay, so we want to be able to rotate our squash and stretch as well. Strain. Rotate. And I guess that's about it. Uh, the one last thing we want to be able to uh, enable onion skinning on our rig. So we will open the misc tab on the sphere and uh, drag onion skinning parameter over here as well. And then we just, yes, that is correct. We click accept and click uh, match current definition. And there you go, we have our rig, we can move it around, we can roll it, we have a parameter that is responsible for squash and stretch, like so, we can move pivot around, we can uh, rotate our squash and stretch if we want so basically oh I think we want to do it like this from minus one to one yes there you go so we can rotate our squash and stretch, we can squash and stretch it, and within this deformation we can roll the ball, like so. And if we will animate, it Let's say we have some animation over here. We can enable onion skinning like so. And we can see our previous and uh, following frames, which is pretty awesome. I am really excited about this new feature in Houdini. That's badass. Anyway, so there you go. There's your ball rig. 
it's probably not perfect it uh, may have some issues when the if you want for example the ball to bounce off the wall or off the ceiling but you know for a bouncing ball exercise it's pretty simple and convenient rig so i hope you found this tutorial useful and i see you next time